Alrighty, so moving on into the new stuff, chapter 12. Chapter 12, title, compound interest. This is the way banks really calculate interest, is they do it using compound interest. What does it mean to compound your interest? File on top of the kind of, yeah. I mean, it, essentially that's what it means. Or what it appropriately means is interest on your interest. So the idea behind compounding interest is that you are going to have a period over which you are going to calculate simple interest. Once you calculate how much simple interest you earn in that period, you add that to your principal, and then the next period that you leave the money in there, it compounds. You calculate interest on your principal again, but also on the added component of the interest from the prior period. All right? So, in detail, the interest earned on in, not on, in each period is added to the principal before calculating the next period's interest. So that's more of a Webster's Dictionary definition to how do you go about dealing with compound interest, okay? So it, it's sort of the long-winded, it's what a banker would tell you about co compound interest, right? Did, is that sentence helpful for you at all? <laughs> it, it, exactly, right? I mean, you may as well have said interest on your interest, right? At least that's catchy and it's easy to remember. Whereas this sounds like you're stuffy, you're wearing a really, you know, annoying tie, probably a double-breasted vest suit jacket and you know and you, you you have no way of bending your back and you're clenched as tight as you can be because you're banging. That's the way banking works. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, it's just the thing, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Alright, so what do we mean by interest earned each period is added to the principal before calculating the next period's interest? Calculate your interest on your principal, you add that to your principal, and then you calculate interest on the remaining amount. Exactly. Rinse and repeat, right? It's another rinse and repeat type of problem, which is really nice, because then it's just like you're taking a shower, and it's kind of nice, right? Because it's probably a hot shower because it's cold out right now. You're so actually, it's good. You'll be earning more than in the next period because your principal will That's absolutely right. The same reason why you pay loans early is the reason why you like compound interest. When you pay loans early, when you go to calculate your interest, your principal's gone down, so your interest is less. Here, when you calculate your interest, you get to add your prior interest to it so that your interest is going to go up. Hence, you like this kind of stuff, which is why banks offer compound interest to entice you to invest your money in their bank. Right? I mean, this is why you guys have thousands of dollars invested in your bank accounts. Right? Hundreds of thousands, sorry. I, I, I wouldn't want to you know, sub you guys short. All right, so, so how do we do this? All right, the key again is that all of this is still based off of simple interest, okay? So really, each period is still simple interest. So we're not going to do anything new. We're just going to take simple interest and compound it on itself. All right? So let's just try a simple example. All right? So I invest, and let's keep the numbers nice and easy, $1,000 at 10% uh, compounded annually. And here's where the new portion of this chapter comes into play is that now after your rate, instead of seeing nothing come after it, except maybe ordinary interest to indicate that 360 days, you will now get this phrase where it is compounded over a certain period. So when I'm talking about periods, I'm not talking about, you know, these things. I'm talking about a length of time, okay? 
So in this case, we are going to calculate our interest annually, once a year. That's what annual means, right? 10% uh, compounded annually over four years. Okay, so what I want to do first is to say, what would this problem be like if these words weren't there? What would you do? If compounded annually wasn't there, what would you do? You'd do regular old simple interest, right? You'd do chapter 10. You'd say, oh, great. I equals PRT. And you'd say, great, take $1,000, multiply by 10%, Multiply by four years, and that's how much interest I would earn. Nice, good old, simple interest. But this is now compound. So what you do when you compound things is that each period you have to do this. All right. So my question to you first off is, how many periods are in this investment? Four. Why? You compound it each year. You're doing it for four years. There's going to be four periods. All right. So. Let's, I'm going to do this in its glorious detail once, well, maybe twice, and then we'll show you the shortcut, all right? All right, so, my first period, this, is your one. So remember that within each period, it's simple interest. So I just need to have I, P, R, and T, right? So what's my principal in the first year? Thousand dollars, because that's how much I put into it. What's my rate? 10%. And how much time is in that first period? A year. One year. So, how much interest do I earn? Use our buddy, simple interest. So we earn $100 of interest in our first year. The key here is that after you calculate your interest, after each period, it is added to the principal before calculating the next period's interest. In other words, the principal for the next year includes your old principal plus your interest. All right? So this principal for year two, thousand plus the hundred dollars. The principal in our second year is $1,100 because we're going to get interest on our interest. Don't forget that you're still getting interest on your principal, though, right? I mean, don't cheat yourself. What's the rate? Didn't change, right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? And how many years are in our second year? One, One right? Again, it's the second year, but it's still just one year, right? It's from the end of the first year to the end of the second year. That's just one year. So how much interest do I generate in my second year? How much do we earn the first year? 100. How much do we earn the second year? 110, an extra 10 bucks, because we earned interest on our interest. Now, what do we do with this $110? Add it to the principal before we start the next principal. So now, in the third year, we're going to earn interest on our interest, and we're also going to earn interest on our interest on our interest from the first year, right? So there's Lots more interest compounding here. So take our 110 and add it to our 1,100. Rate and time? Same. 
<laughs> How much interest do I earn in my third year? And note that it's not just adding $10 every month, right? I mean, you may think, oh, well, the next month's just going to be 120 right? Because you're just going to keep getting an extra bonus $10. No, right? Because you earned that $100 that's going to generate you 10 bucks. The extra 10 bucks earns you that extra one. So the true compounding nature of things is that the interest on top of the interest on top of the interest, you know, it's like once you get a pile of crap and you put more crap on top of the crap, how bad does that crap smell? The more crap you pile on there, that much magnitude, right? I mean, there's just, it's like a dead body. The longer it sits there, the worse it smells. Until eventually it permeates the entire house, right? You guys ever had a mouse die in the walls of your house? No. You're lucky. Then. Yes. It's awful. That is awful, right? When it's first dead, and you're like, something smells weird. Yeah, there's nothing you can do other than, than dig out the wall, right? I mean, there's, yes. and, it, and once it permeates the whole house, it's hard to pinpoint, right? You have to remember, where did it, that stink first start? Oh, it started in the kitchen. Almost always starts in the kitchen if it's a mouse. Okay, leave it alone. I'm sorry. <laughs> getting mildly nauseous. Okay, what do I do this at $121? Yeah. Add it Add it to the principal to start your next period, right? So one more time, 13, 31. One more time, the rate doesn't change. In your fourth year, it's still one year. How much interest in the last year? And again, it's not one of those things where, okay, well, maybe it's that you add 10 and then you add 11. And then you might think, well, then the next month you should add 12. <laughs> That's linear. The nice thing about growth in, in compound interest is it's exponential. Right? And this is why when you invest in something that's compounding interest, the longer you can leave it in there, oh, the more money it makes. And again, it just points out what's extremely true in all business. The more money you have, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not, it, is it a bad or a good thing? I don't know. Regardless, that's how it works. Again, well, I'll call it final value. Or what we're going to start calling it now is the future value. So remember I told you that maturity value and future value are kind of the same thing. When you start talking about compound interest, instead of calling it maturity value, we call it future value. Same thing, right? It's how much money is going to be in the account after all of our time has gone by. In this case, it's, what was that, 13, 60 something? 64, 10? 14, 64, 10. So the future value of $1,000 invested over four years at 10% compounded annually is $1,464.10. And again, if we would have done this in simple interest, just 400 bucks, right? That's all we would have gotten. This is why banks don't do simple interest, because it's not good enough to entice us to put our money in there. Right? Compound interest was you know, started by the British banking industry back in the late 1800s to try and invest, get people to invest in banks because why would banks need to try and convince you to put their money into it? Well, they need to make money too. They need to make money too, for one. And in order to have money to loan out to people, they needed to get money. So this is partially how they did it. The other reason they did it is that back in the 1800s, folks, there was still a whole lot of bank robberies going on. And when the bank got robbed, guess what happened to your money? Goodbye. 
Yes, there was <laughs> there was no FDIC back in the 1800s, folks. So that's kind of like what it's doing anyway. Just robbing, robbing, and paying I mean, <laughs> to some degree, yeah. yes. <laughs> All right. So here is how you go about calculating compound interest. Again, note what it's all based on, though. Simple interest, right? Now, this one's a little bit strange because we're compounding it annually. All right, so let's try a different one. Let's, uh, let's invest, let's keep it at $1,000. It's a nice number. Uh, let's change our percentage to something that's a little bit more reasonable to nowadays terms. Uh, let's go with, uh, yeah, let's keep it 4%. That's maybe, that's wishful thinking in my brain. And this time, let's compound quarterly. What most CDs do is quarterly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Most most certificates of deposit compound their, their money quarterly. In fact, most investment accounts, right? Even if you do an IRA or, or a, a 401k of some sort, they will generate your interest on a quarterly basis, adding it back to your accounts or buying more stock or bonds or whatever it is that your investment is investing in. All right, so I invest $1,000 at 4% compounded quarterly over one and a half years. Find how much interest I earned. So in this problem, we calculated what the future value was, right? We just wanted to figure out how much was in the account at the end of our four-year period. I could potentially ask you in one of these problems to calculate how much interest is generated. Same thing, just slightly different, right? You still have to go through this process, right? So my first question to you is, over here we had four periods because we were compounding annually and we are doing it for four years. Here, we're compounding it quarterly. What does that mean? Every three months, right? Because a quarter of a year is three months. Don't fall into the trap of thinking quarterly for four months. That's not quite right. So over one and a half years, how many periods are there? Six. Six. OK, good. So this one's going to be a little bit uglier. Period one, period two, period three. We're getting there. You've got you to gotta suffer before you, can, before you can learn the short way. Suffering is good for you. No. Builds character. What about the trees? We all need character. The trees are already dead. It's in your notebook. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, so period one. Really, the, the key period is the first period. Because once you set the pattern up, you guys know that you're just going to rinse and repeat from period to period to period to period to period, period, right? So this one is the key one, all right? So, how much did I invest? A thousand bucks. What's my rate? All right, be careful with them. this one. Three months, right? Remember that this is a quarter now. Over here, we were com compounding it annually, so a period was a one-year period, right? Here, Three months. We never use months. We always use years with simple interest. So, one fourth of a year, because three twelfths is one fourth, and that's why they call it quarterly, because this is one quarter. It's kind of nice when there's a little bit of symmetry, and you know, you can get back to where you started and feel safe, right? So, calculate your interest. And I don't call it I, I call it P. You guys did that right, right? So how much interest do I earn in my first period? Ten bucks, kind of a sad investment. But again, remember we're only compounding this per quarter. What do I do with that ten bucks? Now 
My new principal is $1,010. Again, though, rinse and repeat. The rate is still 4%. The time in the second quarter is still going to be just a quarter of a year. Slightly weird. Ten ten, right? Please note a good way of making sure that you're doing these things right is that these numbers always have to be going up. May not be a whole lot. Right? Over here, it was kind of a lot, right? We went from 100 to a whole 110 dollars. We earned an extra 10 bucks. Here, how much extra did we earn? 10 cents. Doesn't sound like that's, bit, that's that big a deal. Again, remember that we're only doing this in a quarter of a year as opposed to a full year. That's why it works that way. Again, though, add it back. So here it turned out that in our third period, oh man, we added a dime, we added another dime. Would have been nice to get more than a dime, but we didn't. Again. I'm not even going to write the rate and the time anymore because it's going to be the same. That's the whole point. That's the joy of it. Thousand thirty thirty times point oh four times one fourth. Ten point three zero three. Can't round that number up quite yet. We haven't quite gotten to adding an extra penny to that dime extra that we're making, but. Mm -hmm. Keep adding it back. P for the fifth period. 10, 40, 60. Rate and time. Same thing. So interest in our first fifth period, 10, 40, 60 times 0.04 times 1 fourth. What do we get this time? This time we get that extra penny. I missed a zero. Make sure you put the zero in there. So now it's 10.4060. That's six. Woohoo! We got our extra penny. Yay! Never throw away a penny. One more time, we're almost done. 10, 50, Interest on the last period. Ten, 
105 times 10, 5101 times 0.04 times 14. Ten dollars and fifty-one cents. So our future value. Add that ten fifty-one one more time. One o six one fifty-two. There's one of these on the homework. Actually, all the other ones on the homework you'll be using the shortcut technique, which I'll show you in a second. So, what did I ask for though? You could, if you wanted to, go back and say, interest, $10, cents, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $
table entry, you need two pieces of information. You need two pieces. You need to know what page you're on, and you need to know what row to look on. Okay? Because if you look, right, as you flip the page, the only thing that's changing from page to page at the top is the percent. So really, you need to figure out what percentage are you earning and how many times are you earning it, right? So page is the percent earned in each period. And the row is the number of periods. So our first problem, right? We invested, you guys don't need to write this down, you already have it written down but since I erased it. At 10% uh, compounded annually. Annually for four years. All right, so the page that we look on is how much interest are we earning in any one period? Since we are compounding these things annually, how much interest, or what was our interest rate each year? 10%. So for us, our first problem, we are going to go to page 10%. Page 20. I will tell you, I, I, I will not use the numbers of the page, I will use the percentage, which is the number at the top. Because the number at the bottom doesn't mean anything to me. So page is always a percent, not a number. Be careful with that. Alright? Now, the row is the number of periods. How many periods were in our problem? Four. Four. So we are going to go to four, because that's the number of periods they are. Look that number up. What is it? 1.4641. And what happens if you take 1,000 times 1.4641? What do you get? Compare that to what you got in the other problem. Hey, what do you know? It turns out that it was exactly right. That doesn't happen all that often, folks, but every now and then it does. All right, that's the shortcut. All you got to do is remember, figure out what page it is. The page is slightly <coughs> tricky, though, folks, OK? In this particular problem, it was relatively easy because we were compounding it annually, so knowing how much interest we earned in a year is easy. You just pluck off the percent. Okay? In this problem is where it starts to get a little bit on the tricky side. Okay? So, let's use the table. Now, in this problem, we went to our percentage and said we're going to use 10%. But remember, that was because our period was one year. What's our period in this problem? It's a quarter, right? So we're not earning a full interest percentage in any one period. Remember what we were multiplying by every period. What's 0 .04 times 1 fourth? Point oh one. What percent is that? One. one. That's how much interest we're earning in each period in this problem. When you're compounding period is not one year, you have to adjust it slightly. Okay? So it's really the product of these things. So why was 10% okay here? Because it was a whole year. Because it was a whole year, right? We were letting our money sit there a whole year before we calculated any interest. Here, it only had to sit three months. 
So it's every three month period, essentially, we were earning 10% or 1% interest. All right? So the page that we go to on this problem is 1%. And what I like to set, tell you guys is that here's the easy way to go about doing it, right? Technically, it's the 4% page, but how many times do we compound in a quarter? Four per year. If you divide that number by four, what do you get? 1%. To figure out what row you're on, or the number of periods, how many years are there? One and a half, right? If we divided this by four and we multiply this by four, how many periods are there? Well, we knew how many because we did it already, right? Six. So one of the methods that I, I use to try and convince students that they have to be careful by just plucking this number off is always go to your compounding periods and say, oh, I need to divide my percentage by this number number of times we compound per year, that'll tell me how much my percentage is each period. That'll tell me what page to go to. The row is always just a number of periods. And if I give it to you in years, you can always multiply by that same number to get the number of periods. It's a technique that sometimes helps, sometimes doesn't. Again, I've, you know, tried using that exclusively once and it tended to confuse students too much, so I'm a little nervous about showing it, but I, I do like the concept, right? That you need to convert your percentage into how much is your percent each period, all right? If you're doing it quarterly, you got to divide by four. Now, let's go to our table entry on 1% page, whatever page that is, row six, what's our number there? 1.0615. Multiply that by a thousand. What do you get? 1061.5. And what do you note about the two numbers this time? Two cents took you two pennies. They took two cents away. Okay, this is why I was trying to tell you guys that this is an approximation using the table. The approximation will be correct, but it will only be correct up to five digits. The first five digits of this problem are right, right? The one, zero, six, the one, and the five are all right. This last one, it's the sixth digit, no guarantees. At that stage, the table starts to get rounded. That's why the exact way would tell you, well, you should have gotten next to two pennies. The approximate way says, eh, no dice. All right? All right, we got two minutes. Let me show you one more time, one more example. This time we'll only do it the shortcut method. I invest uh, $5,000 at, uh, let's say, 3% uh, compounded semi-annually for 10 years. How much will I have in 10 years? Find the future value, in other words. Now, what does it mean to be compounded semi-annually? Twice. twice a year. In other words, you compound your interest twice each year. So, my principal is $5,000. This is good. When you're using the shortcut, when, I think, when you're approximating how much money is going to be in there, the two things that you have to tell me are the page and the row. The page is always based off of the percentage, okay? 
So what I want you to do is to start with the percentage. But now, how much of that percentage are we going to have to divide by? Two. Two, right? Because we're dividing it twice per year, so this number needs to be divided by two. That will tell you how much interest you're earning in a half a year. So this is the 1.5% page or the 1.5% page, whichever way you want to look at that. And again, that's why the, the top of each page, right? It gives you the percent. You just have to make sure you go to the right page. The row is the number of periods. How many periods are we going to calculate interest on this one? 20. And the way I like to say it, right, is that if you write down the number of years, how many times do you compound it per year? Twice. Twice. So that, therefore, you multiply by 2. Hence, there are 20 periods. And then it's just a matter of going to the table and finding the value. So please, everybody, make sure that you can get the table entry. One and a half percent, 20, 1.3469. You're on that, David? Yeah. You got it out. I think it's a bit good. Okay. What do I do with that number? Multiply by however much you put in, right? How much interest did they earn? Subtract the principal. All right. So um, we almost went through all the different other ways that you can compound. There are two more ways that you can compound money. You can compound it monthly. If you compound it monthly, how many times do you compound in a year? Well, the other way you can do is compound things daily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 365. Most compounded periods, just so that you know, in the bank are actually only using 360. No, they actually use bankers, which is actually better for you, technically. Yeah, true it is. Okay, we will do some examples like that on Wednesday. In addition, we will also learn how to do this backwards. Well, this is how you, how you can look to the future. Sometimes you want to say, well, I know what the future is. How do I get back to the present? Okay. Imagine that, imagine the, 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 you know, the Michael J. Fox and that I need to get back to the future. Please don't forget to give me the Chapter 10 homework on Wednesday if you haven't already.